Adobe Premiere file here is 07 and this contains the whoosh. The whoosh noise is here. So it comes along to this point and let's just turn off all the other audio layers and leave just the whoosh um, switched on. There we go, don't know if you can hear that, but there's the whoosh. So at the top here are all my layers. Now I have my nested sequence here, which contains, as I said before, all of these layers all merged into one, so I can do things with all of these all together. I've got my color blue here, and uh, actually I've done another layer there to keep it blue. Now do you remember that on the previous file, I'm just going to show you it, so with the ending zoom, now the ending is not quite finished, because something went wrong at the end. When you get to this point, right at the end, you see that bit there, let's just move it back. Um, I've now got the rope fading effect coming into the picture and it just doesn't look right. And also I've still got the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che middle part still faded up here a little bit. I cheated a little bit here. Rather than go into the timeline here and find out which layer is at the wrong setting, um, it might even just be this section here which, which shouldn't be here. But anyway, I didn't want to mess around with that any longer. In this one, I kind of cheated. That light blue colour that you saw it was fading up into, all I did is I just added that to the timeline at that position there. When the picture goes completely wrong about this point, I've now faded up this one. So if I just turn that one off, there's the T and M, which hasn't faded out completely. But if I just fade up this layer here, that's what's making it um, fade out a little bit quicker and you don't get those um, that shadow effect from the ropes. I think I actually sorted it out at the end, but anyway, there you go. Fading up into another blue effect and that blue effect goes all the way along to about nearly 13 seconds. This is the bit which I normally use to fade into my video. I get the introduction, I get the blue, and then it gives me a little bit of time to merge this in to the actual video itself via a transition or something. So there we have it. Let me just zoom out of this uh, timeline here with all the layers all showing on the left hand side here. Let me just show you the entire sequence now and I'll explain it as it goes along. This part here, we have my background image coming up. I think I did a, um, I did an effect to get that uh, wavy effect there. Now what effect was that? There we go. Turbulent displace. So that's the effect. This turbulent displace effect is fully active when the movie first starts off and you can see the image just about in the background there. It's all over the place. And that's because I've got the turbulent displace um, set at 170, size 200 at that point there. When it moves to the next position, which is there, I don't want that. I want a nice solid picture because the the um, effect is now finished. At this point here, I then cancel that effect by putting the amount at zero and the size at 100. In other words, the turbulent displace is no longer active and it remains that way until it reaches the end of the introduction, which is all the way along here. The fade up, you can see it's not quite active there. I can actually move this up a little bit to show you because the setting I want is right at the top here. It's at 19%. And then I want to fade it up quite rapidly to this point here. And that reaches um, 85%. And then I've got it increasing just a little bit more to here and that's 100 percent so that's how i faded that effect up so that explains the first few seconds of my introduction the turbulent displace now i gradually fade up the ropes which i think is um, video layer two yes it is and along with that i fade up the uh, shadow effect so if i turn both of them off that's what it would look like so now I'm bringing my ropes in and the shadow effect gradually. 
now I have the uh, the carriage and the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che off the screen. Then I started with the carriage. I got the settings right so that it, it was just off the screen. And then by the end of the introduction, it's in the middle of the screen. Um, I worked all that beforehand and then I applied the same position settings to all the other layers. So they all move up together, but they're not all active. So if I move it along now, the carriage, of course, is active. The up and the down arrow are active. And then as each chime occurs, each layer turns on one at a time at the chime positions. The chimes are down here. And I've put these little uh, markers in up here to um, so I can see easily where they turn on. So now I'm fading up each layer one at a time. And then up here, I've got a screech to a stop. My screech to a stop is probably that one there. And don't forget that all the chime sounds and the screech to a stop I put into one file. And then I cut it about and I applied it onto different layers so it plays them in different, um, at different positions. So now my carriage has come to a stop. And if I just um, select one of these layers, There is my stop position. So I'm moving from this position to this position fast. And then I end up at this position. And that is the final position. So the final position of the carriage and all of the um, letters is 640 by 462. And it remains in that position until the end of the video. Then I move to the zoom in sequence, which I've just demonstrated. Mr. Matt and Mr. Che layers are then nested and the camera zooms into them. I've got the uh, that 3D effect, which makes it sort of like tilt up as well. Then the last layer that's active is the blue color. And that's the one I use to um, transition into the actual movie itself. I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'm using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe um, Premiere. I've got CS4 installed on this laptop. You have to have a quite a powerful PC to be able to use the, um, the CS5 and the CS6. Unfortunately, I have to use CS4 because my laptop um, is not fast enough. So that's it.